Hi, I'm Daniel Foley from the Abundant Life Training Center, and welcome to this week's yearly cycle updates. Today is January 1st, New Year's Day of 2021, and we are getting ready to embark on a new journey for the year of 2021. Now, just the other day, I was talking to a, a client of mine, and she was talking about how in the Episcopal Church, the 12 days of Christmas actually start on Christmas Day. And this is something I didn't, I didn't know this. I wasn't aware of this. Many of you maybe know this already, but I wasn't aware of it. But the 12 days of Christmas start on Christmas Day, and it's the 12 days from Christmas Day after Christmas. And so uh, the 12th day, they say, or the, the 12th and 13th day was the day that they say when the wise men or the kings arrive with the gifts for baby Jesus. And that 12th or 13th day is called the day of Epiphany or the King's Day. But there's a day in there, the 8th day, so eight days after Jesus was born in the Jewish culture, uh, it says in Luke 2, I think Luke 2, 21, that in the Jewish culture, it was the law that they had to bring all baby boys to be circumcised on that eighth day. So the eighth day, it says in Luke 2, 21, they brought Jesus, as was the custom in the Jewish culture, to be circumcised on that eighth day. And on that eighth day, he was given his name. So the tradition in the culture at that time was the boys would be circumcised, but they would also be given their name on the eighth day. Well, it just so happens that it turns out that the eighth day is New Year's Day. The eighth day is New Year's Day every single year. So eight days after Christmas, New Year's Day is a day of a reminder. What it was circumcision. Circumcision was a reminder of God's covenant with Abraham. So we have a reminder of covenant, and we also have a new name being given. Now, covenant. We have a new covenant with God that God's going to do continually good for us all the time. We can take communion as a symbol of our covenant. So what I would encourage you to do, we're in a new year, take communion over the year. Uh, hopefully you've gone through the process with us of developing your miracle, your plan, and getting clear on the direction you feel like God wants you moving in over the next year. Then I think it's a good idea to take communion over that plan. And then we've been talking recently about giving a memorial portion. Usually whenever we pursue anything that God's asking us to pursue, usually we can't do it in our own strength. And so a memorial portion is just taking a small handful of what you have. We talked about in the Feast of Hanukkah that just happened a few weeks ago, that it's a reminder that God can take the little bit that we have and he can do the miraculous with it. And so it's a good idea, I think, to take a small handful of what you have, a little bit of money or whatever it may be that would be symbolic of you saying, hey, God, I can't make this happen in my own strength. I'm going to give a memorial portion away, just like Jesus multiplied the little bit of fish and loaves. I'm going to take this and I'm going to give it away as a symbol, as a reminder, as a point of trust, as a point of remembrance that God can take the little bit that I have and he can do the miraculous with it in this next year of 2021. So first, we have the idea of covenant. In my book, The Eighth Day, we talk about how the eighth day is symbolic of covenant and new beginnings and grace. It's a reminder. Today is a reminder. A new year is a reminder of a fresh start. We have a covenant with God where he is working for our good continually all the time. We have an invisible partner working for our good. And communion helps us to remember that. And then I think we can also give a memorial portion as a remembrance of that as well. Now, the new name aspect of this. We talk about a new year a new name. When I was going through my miracle year process, I was getting this nudge at the, at the start of the year in 2019, a couple of days, right about this time of the year, right around Christmas time, heading into 2019, that God wanted me to work on my, uh, my plan for the year of 2019. And right after I was finished with that, my daughter's playing with a toy ice cream set, and she says, I got to get back to selling my ice cream. And I said, how do you sell your ice cream? She said, 61. And I asked her again and again, because her answer made no sense. And her answer every time was 61. I said, what are you talking about? And then I just heard on the inside, go read Isaiah 61. And Isaiah 61 is the passage of scripture that Jesus reads. And he says, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he's anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor, to release the captives, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And so then that night, I'm reading a book about Albert Einstein, and the title of the chapter that I was reading was called The Miracle Year. So in the Bible, you'll see there's a theme. Jesus says, I've come to do what's written about me in your book, God. David says, I think it's in Psalm 139, all of the days of my life, God wrote about them in his book. All the days that were ordained for me, God wrote about them in his book. God wrote a book 
about your life. God wrote a book about your life. He wrote a book about this year, 2021. So the question is, what are we going to name that? What's the title of that chapter? What's the title of the chapter for the year 2021 going to say? And we get to name it. Today is the eighth day. What are we going to name this year of 2021? What are we going to call it? Now, in the Bible, you'll find that names were very important. In fact, God often had to change people's names to get them to be able to become the person he created them to be. To walk out that plan that's written in your book, often a name change is required. Abram had to become Abraham. Sarai had to become Sarai. Saul had to become Paul. Simon had to become Peter. There's all kinds of examples of God changing people's names so that they could step into what he's prepared for them. Recently, we've been thinking a lot about this verse of, I think it's in 1 Timothy, it says that we are, uh, we're doing things according to God's purpose and his grace given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. God wrote a book about your life. He wrote about your purpose. He wrote about the grace to be given you in Christ Jesus. And our goal is to get our lives to align with that and to walk out that plan for our lives. Now, what I would say is this, when I went through my miracle year process. That idea of God telling me, hey, this is going to be a miracle year. The year was named. This is going to be the miracle year. That concept helped me tremendously as I was going through the year because for miraculous things to occur, oftentimes we, got, we get put in some tight situations. And I was getting put in some very tight situations and I needed some miracles to happen. And that word, this is going to be the miracle year, this naming of the miracle year before it ever even started. On January 1st, I knew it was going to be the miracle year, even though it looked like it wasn't going to be the miracle year most of the year. But I kept hanging on to that word. This is going to be the miracle year. So what I would encourage you to do is to press in, to seek after God. What's the title of the chapter for this year? What are we calling this year? Now, for me personally, the feeling that I'm getting, the nudge that I'm getting on the inside is that this, this year, 2021, is the year of greatness. Something I've been pursuing God and seeking God on for a long time is how do I know if my life is on track? How do I know if I'm moving according to that, his purpose, his grace for me? How do I know if my life is on track and I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing? Well, the answer I've learned is our indicator is we are making other people great. Our indicator is we're making other people great. Now, but making other people great, that's kind of an abstract idea. I've been seeking and searching for a long time. How can I put some more concreteness to this so I can know for sure that my life is on track? So I've been narrowing down. What is greatness in the kingdom of God? We've got some principles for greatness in the kingdom of God. Jesus said, if you want to be great in the kingdom, you must humble yourself and become like this little child. So childlike faith, believing that nothing is impossible with God, paired with the humility of saying, you know what? I've only got a little bit. I can do nothing in my own strength. It's God's grace and power working through me that makes all things possible. And so this is childlike faith and humility. Have you said yes to a bigger vision in your life? Have you said yes to a bigger vision in your life and pursuing God's plan and vision, what he wrote about in your book? Because it's going to take childlike faith and humility to make it happen. And then we have in Psalms 18, David says, God's right hand supported me and his gentleness made me great. It's understanding gentleness, that God's going to take a very gentle approach with us. And we need to carry that gentleness out into everything that we do, taking a more gentle approach. All right, now we're in a time people are making New Year's resolutions. And I was in the gym business for a long time. You're going to see people going crazy, working out like crazy, radically changing their diets, doing all kinds of crazy things to their body that are not what? They're not gentle. Taking a more gentle approach, setting you up for longer term success. Starting with the seed. Everything in the kingdom of God starts as a seed. Taking a more gentle approach, taking a more graceful approach in everything that we do. And understanding that God is doing that for us, we need to take a more gentle approach ourselves. And we need to let that carry through and to be more gentle with the other people in our lives as well. Give them the same grace that God is giving us. And then we have Jesus says, if you want to be great in the kingdom, you must practice the commandments and teach them. So are you practically applying things into your life, into your purpose, into your health, into your family, into your finances, into every area of life? Are you practically 
applying principles, biblical principles into every area of your life? Are you practicing those? But then we can only grow so far on our own. At a certain point, the only way to keep growing and to keep expanding and to become great is to begin teaching that to other people, begin focusing on making other people great. So we got childlike faith and humility, gentleness, practicing and teaching. And then finally, Jesus says, if you want to be great in the kingdom, you must become the servant of many. Become the servant of many. So we got to find our gift. we got to find our calling, what his purpose and grace that he prepared for us before the foundation of the world. And we got to be walking in that, giving our gift to the world, making an impact for many people, not one or two people, but many people. And those are the keys to greatness, I believe, in the kingdom of heaven. So this year, the year of greatness. What does God want to do? He wants to make us, as he told Noah, be fruitful, multiply, and increase greatly. Increase greatly. He's getting to this place where we are the servant of many. But the path that we got to take to getting to that place in this year of 2021 is we got to say yes to a bigger vision. We got to take the limits off God and say, you know what? Nothing is impossible with God. And having that very simple, childlike faith that just believes that I can't do it in my own strength, but with God working through me, nothing is impossible. That's step one. Then we got to understand the concept of gentleness. Gentleness is one of the fruits of the Spirit. We got to understand gentleness and be applying it practically into our lives. And then we got to practice. We got to teach. We got to be implementing the fundamentals, implementing the fundamentals, developing mastery on those things and teaching them. And then we've got to step into a higher level and become the servant of many. I believe that is the path to greatness in God's kingdom. And I believe that's the theme that he's got me focused on for the year. But I encourage you to take some time. What are you going to name this year? Because what we name things is often what they become. I know 2020 was a, a crazy year, an interesting year, maybe not the best year for many people. We've got a chance. We've got a reminder today, a New Year's Day, a new beginning, a fresh start, a new covenant with God. What are we going to name this year? What is this chapter in your book called? And let's begin to walk out that plan and cling to that word, cling to that name as we walk out this year of 2021.